Howdy everyone, WAPYA here. I had a request from one of my viewers to help illustrate how to measure receiver bandwidth. And it's actually pretty simple to do. The setup is very, very similar to the setup that we had in our earlier video where we measured the receiver sensitivity. I was trying to decide what uh, receiver to use. And at first I was going to use the Kenwood TS-2000 here. And then I realized I should probably switch over to the Flex SDR. And the reason for that is the Flex SDR gives me a display that looks like this. It's extremely graphical in that it shows you the center frequency that you're tuned to. And in this case, it shows the area to the right of that red line. That red line represents the carrier frequency. It's right on 14.2. That lit area to the right represents the upper sideband, and that's the receive bandwidth that I've chosen to illustrate in this test. So as you can see here, I've got the receiver set up for upper sideband mode, and we're picking a bandwidth here of 3.3 kilohertz. So what I've done is I've turned off any noise blankers and things like that. The AGC is turned off and you could hear just a small amount of background noise from fans and things like that. So you'll notice this is the one of the reasons why I picked this radio. It's not really intuitive to a lot of people if you try to run this test and go ahead and pick upper sideband and I'll see if I can get the mouse in here here we go so this represents the upper sideband if we go ahead and we were to pick the lower sideband you can see that the band pass switches over to the left side of the carrier and that would be the lower sideband same bandwidth but we've now gone on the other side of the carrier so let's just stick with upper sideband. We'll click that again. And you'll notice that if I go from a 3.3 kilohertz bandwidth here, I could pick something like 2.7. Now watch what happens. It'll narrow down. See, that narrows down. What's nice about the flex is, is that I can pick an infinite number of, of bandwidths to measure. I could actually take this this window and I can actually make it any bandwidth that I wanted to so I'm just gonna stick to some canned bandwidths let's just pick 3.3 kilohertz anyway what we're gonna do it's pretty simple right now you can see I've got a carrier injected into the radio and you can see the carrier is right here in the middle and it's right at 14.2 let me show you where we're getting the, that RF signal from all right, so the RF signal for this test is coming from a, just a regular old RF signal generator. What's nice about this test is it doesn't have to be super accurate as far as the amplitude goes. Matter of fact, the amplitude could be way, way off and it won't affect the measurements at all for measuring the bandwidth of the, of the receiver. What I've done is selected a comfortable level. In this case, I've selected the frequency of 14.2 and the level of minus 90 dBm. Remember that a level of minus 73 dBm is S9. So I wanted it to be under S9 a little bit, down the you know, S6, S7 range, something like that. So minus 90 dBm is a good level. Now in this case I've got uh, no modulation, even though that's showing 20%, I've got it turned off here. And we're just putting in a straight carrier. And that's what we're seeing on the flex display. That's one thing really nice about the flex. It, it shows you graphically what's going on. So this is where we're getting the RF source. All right, now that we've established where the RF signal is coming from, the next thing we do is we just want an audio output signal. And in this case, I've tapped off the headphone signal and I've just got a small adapter there to go from a quarter inch over to a phono, RCA phono plug. And that goes right over here into our meter and I've got a small adapter that converts the RCA adapter over to a uh, BNC. 
and in this case I'm going to be using uh, old trusty HP 3400A RMS uh, voltmeter. This is just an AC voltmeter. And the reason I like using it so much for tests like this is because of that bottom scale. It's got a bottom scale where the divisions are indicated in decibels and that makes our life really really easy because what we're going to try to do is measure the 6 dB uh, bandpass or six uh, measure the the bandwidth of the filter and we're going to note where the signal drops off six decibels uh, from the center frequency so we're, we're going to establish a reference signal uh, when it's in the bandpass directly at zero and then we're going to tune off frequency and we're going to watch the meter drop until we hit 6 dB down and we're going to note the frequency uh, above and below and the difference between them will represent the receiver bandwidth. One thing that I want to mention is in, in this measurement we're using an old HP RMS AC, uh, AC RMS voltmeter and I'm using it because it has the the decibel scale and that makes it very very convenient to find the 6 dB points which is traditionally where bandwidths are measured but if you don't have a meter like this you can actually use uh, any good quality AC RMS reading uh, meter even if uh, some of them uh, some of the DVMs for example have DB scales and so you could use that in lieu of using a meter like this and even if you did not have a DVM that um, has a decibel scale you could still just take raw AC voltages okay just measure how many volts or millivolts are coming out of the audio from the receiver and convert those numbers over to decibels okay and once you convert them to decibels you want to look for a difference of six decibels between your two readings so it would be a little bit time consuming and it'd be a little cumbersome to do but even if you didn't have a reading in decibels you could take raw voltage measurements and still find where one is 6 dB down from the other. So I wanted to point that out. If if you don't have a meter like this, or if you don't have a D, uh, DVM that has a decibel scale, but you have a DVM that will measure AC RMS voltages, you can still perform this test. So just wanted to make that clear. As an example here, you can see there's our carrier. Now what I've done is I've set up the flex here so that as I move the mouse wheel, I'm going to be moving in in 100 hertz steps so you can see there I've gone down to 900 and there's 800 700 and you can see as I'm moving down in frequency see the carrier now is in that bandpass and we're able to hear that tone and that's the one nice thing by the way about having something like a flex where the receiver is dead nuts accurate as far as its amplitude accuracy Notice uh, the amplitude, the S-meter, is showing minus 90 dBm, and that's exactly what our signal generator was set to. So we can move, we can move the, the tuned frequency. In this case, we're going lower and lower in frequency. But this is why I wanted to use the flex, is to show you it's not real intuitive to a lot of people why you have to go down in frequency to hear that tone and see here we've we've gone down to 196 and a half and we no longer can hear that tone because the carrier now is above the window and as we come back up in frequency the carrier is in the bandpass and then as soon as we hit you can just barely hear it there. There's about a hundred hertz tone, and there's two hundred, and the carrier now theoretically is outside the bandpass. So let's kind of move things along here. Doesn't matter where we go in here. Um, that's one thing nice about software to find radios. The filters are extremely accurate. What we're going to do is notice as I tuned up and down in frequency what we're doing is we're reading the level right there you can see there's no no tone and so there's no level on the AC voltmeter 
But once we're inside the bandpass, and if I get right in front of that meter, we're very, very close to that 0 dB uh, marking down there. So I'm just going to call that good enough. Now the idea is, you could do this two ways, actually. If you've got a receiver that has got very, very fine resolution where you can actually move in one hertz steps, for example, or five hertz steps, um, you can actually tune the receiver higher and lower and just note where this level drops from the zero dB reference down to minus six dB down. So you could move the receiver or if you want you can leave this set to one frequency here like right there at 200 and then you can actually move the signal generator frequency slowly up in frequency until you start getting a reading and then keep moving the signal generator frequency and then it'll start dropping off and then as you leave the bandpass you'll have no reading on the meter so you can move the signal generator frequency back and forth to determine this width or you can use the receiver to measure the width so either way you're going to get exactly the same reading so in this case let's set it up and let's uh, use the the flex receiver here to measure the actual um, bandwidth of this filter now like I said theoretically it's saying 3.3 kilohertz let's see how close it it actually comes to so we know that as we come in here we've got a level of 0 dBm what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust I'm moving in a hundred hertz steps here and that's a little bit too coarse so let's knock it down to 10 hertz steps we could actually go down to 1 hertz but that's really no reason to do so but let's go down to 10 hertz and what we're going to do, notice we're going lower and lower in frequency. Notice that carrier is going to be getting close to the filter's edge. And theoretically, what we want to do is we want to measure, there's 1 dB down, there's about uh, almost 3 dB down and this is indicating how sharp the filter is on the flex and there's about six and a half dB down so six and a half dB down you can see it it's uh, it's 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 uh, it's a very very sharp filter what we may want to do to get better resolution is let's move that to one hertz steps and let's make this exactly 6 dB. There we go. Let's move that. There we go. So there's 6 dB down. And what we can do is we can read that frequency directly. And let's write down this number, that frequency. So that's 199.919. All right. So I know this is really hard to see, but what I've done is uh, I've just scribbled down some numbers here. I just made a note of what the frequency was for the low end. It was at 14, 199.919. And now we're going to go ahead and measure the high frequency. So I've gone ahead and reset the carrier, the receiver's uh, center frequency to 200. And there's the carrier, and there's our upper side band. So now we're going to go ahead and measure the other side and find out where the signal drops off uh, 6 dB. All right. So let's go ahead and start that. What you can see is I've upped my step size to 50 hertz. I'm now tuning lower and lower in frequency. And as you can see, we... Now as you're changing frequency, it's not uncommon for a lot of receivers to show fluctuations in this meter going up and down a little bit. And what that would represent is ripple in the receiver's filter. Um, any filter like that is going to have a skirt where the response comes up. And there may be a little bit of ripple along the top in, in the band pass. And then the other side of the skirt comes down where there's no response. So depending, ideally, 
a perfect filter would look just like this representation. This is what's called a, a brick wall filter. Um, it's theoretical and it doesn't exist. A brick wall is one that has absolutely no response and then all of a sudden the signal comes up perfectly, res uh, perfect response. There's no overshoot in the signal and there's no ripple up here. And that's a theoretical filter and they don't exist. But um, the software defined radios have come pretty darn close to, to almost a perfect filter. They have very, very sharp skirts and they have very little ripple. As you can see, as I move in frequency, you can see that meter is not moving at all. So that means there's extremely little ripple. So now what I'm going to do is, now that I'm getting close to the high end here, I'm going to come back down and I'm going to knock this down to the 1 hertz setting so that I can tune finely. And what I'm doing is we're going to note where the signal, there's 1 dB drop, there's 2, there's 3, there's 4, 5, yeah, color right there. There's 6 dB exactly. And as you can see right there, now our carrier is on the other side of the bandpass of this filter. And we can go ahead and read this frequency off. And let's go ahead and make a note of that. 14, 196, 551. Alright, so let's go ahead and mute that so that we don't have to listen to it. And what I've done is gone ahead and scribbled the high-end frequency, and that was that 196.551. And all you do is you subtract one from the other. It doesn't matter which one it is, just means one, you do it one way it'll be a positive number, and the other way it'll be a negative. So here we can see that the difference between these two is 3,368 hertz. In other words, it's 3.368 kilohertz. So that 3.36 kilohertz actually is is pretty pretty close to the 3.3 kilohertz filter that we've selected on the radio and of course because not any uh, any filter is not going to be perfect it's actually not going to look like this there's actually going to be a very very slight curve to this wall and that's actually what we're measuring that extra 68 hertz of width is due to the filter having an actual skirt that is not straight up and down. So that's all it really takes to measure the the bandwidth of a receiver filter and like I said you can do it the other way also you can actually leave the radio set at one frequency and take your signal generator if it's accurate enough um, let's see let's go back over to to this guy. So this this particular signal generator does have enough resolution I, I could actually bump it up in in Hertz uh, and and measure the low frequency and the high frequency and we could end up with you know getting the difference that way so if you've got a signal generator that has really really good frequency resolution you can measure it that way if not don't worry about it do it just the way I showed it and you can end up with numbers so I hope this was helpful and I'll go ahead and get this posted. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And if you like the video, give us a like. 73.